This is project six, video number three, the one in which we uh, apply the finishing touches and documentation. So uh, here we got to say, uh, describe the situation. Um, thoroughly describe situation and say what this function does. So you got to write up a nice description there of the function. It really should start a percent sign immediately following function so that uh, it shows up um, in MATLAB like right here saying what the, the details are on that file if you uh, select that so I'll thoroughly describe the situation except there should be an actual description. If you make the first line uh, pretty uh, telling that uh, it helps the user. They don't have to go into it to see what it does. Um, and then uh, you got to make sure you put your name So I'm going to try to do all this stuff in memory and then uh, go through the checklist to see what I forgot. Then go uh, you need uh, input variables Uh, variables. They're really constant, but D is the uh, distance that the observer is from the train track and VT. is the speed the train then I go a percent percent output variables percent none percent attribution let's go Um, and here, for my part, uh, the function Y lim is a lab help to how to use So, uh, please tell me a story here in the attribution uh, where, uh, tell me where you got stuck and uh, what you had to do to get unstuck as opposed to just saying use video 1 for the pencil and paper part, video 2 for the code, and video 3 for the documentation. Give me, tell me the story. Uh, it's, uh, tell me what really happened. Um, like, uh, did it all myself, thought I had it right, checked it over, realized it was an error. Um, whatever. Um, it would be cool to see you guys uh, work it out all by yourself and if you had uh, like a could could be quite a bit different because you could choose a totally different coordinate system. Um, this get the cosine is not the only way. It could be uh, the angle itself is the arc tangent of d over x and then uh, the cosine is uh, uh, the cosine of that angle as opposed to, I, I use Pythagorean's theorem to, to put down the cosine and, and uh, there are a lot of options where you know if you do it on your own it's pretty unlikely that you do it the exact same way I did it. If I did it again a year from now I'd probably do it a different way. 
you know, if, if I waited long enough to I forget how I did it this time. I kind of like the way I did it this time, but uh, there are lots of other ways. And then, uh, avoiding the false zero isn't really required. It's, uh, I think of it, uh, I wouldn't accuse anybody else of it, but I think I'm being rude if I'm doing a presentation to a physicist and I've got something with a false zero in there that, and I and there's no reason for it. Sometimes uh, there is a reason for it because you're looking for relatively tiny changes of some huge value uh, and then it would be impolite of me not to point out that hey this is a false zero you know because um, one the reader should always look and see what the scale runs to and from but there's uh, kind of an automatic assumption the uh, the default is that uh, where the two axes cross is zero comma zero. So um, I think it's just a matter of courtesy to uh, and and make uh, helping people avoid confusion to put that in there. Okay, so uh, what else have we got? I guess uh, in this description, I think if I were doing it, I would probably use some of the variable names, like when I talk about the observed frequency. Um, uh, put in parentheses f prime, you know, so people that that tells people what I'm doing there. But let's see how. Otherwise, this makes sense. That so that's the starting position, the frequency, total distance. I don't think any of these variable names need explanation. Then I'm setting up a a time array. That's pretty obvious. That's obvious. V toward, um, I think that is kind of obvious in the context of a Doppler effect. V toward would be the the component of the speed of the velocity toward somebody. And then F prime. This looks like the Doppler formula with you know some of the plus minuses when you know the receiver being at rest. So uh, I think it's pretty self-documenting. But you can help that out even a little bit more if you, uh, you know, if you mention the component of the velocity toward the person, then put in parentheses the name of the variable that you use to represent that. Um, which uh, hopefully you guys have different names for the variables, but that are just as clear. V sound, I guess it's hard to to beat that. That makes sense. The velocity of sound in the air to call it V sound. All right, but uh, I got more to do. I got to title the axes here. So, uh, title, the graph, title in lowercase, remember that, and uh, I'm plotting observed frequency versus time, and then uh, X label. That would be the time in seconds. Yeah, Y label. The frequency that is heard by the observer, so I call that observed. Observed frequency. And that's in hertz. Reciprocal seconds. And somehow that's in a different color than everything else. So maybe something's wrong. That should be uh, square brackets. So it doesn't look like it's a function of something. Y label. Open parentheses. Open quote. Quoted string is unterminated, so I forgot. Closing quote. There it is. That's why it's uh, that color. And that's why it was that color. Let's see if it's still working. I'll get rid of the uh, old uh, version of the graph and try up arrow and get it to where you can see it. And uh, yeah, looks like it's still working. Observe frequency versus time. 
observed frequency of hertz, time in seconds. Square brackets, not parentheses. Yeah. I think that looks good. So what else have I got? Right, your own attribution here. For my part, I looked the function. I looked the function looked up the function while I'm using MATLAB help to see how to use the automatic value for the upper limit while setting my own lower limit. Okay. All right, time to look at the checklist. Complete algebraic solution. I think I got uh, the algebraic part. That actually looks like stuff being X'd out, but it was really, I wanted the component of VT in that direction, in the toward the person direction, okay. Um, the evaluation of the algebraic solution needed to determine the test case results. It's funny, it was very little of the analyzing it. I mean, th this formula is the only one that I put in there, but I was able to deduce what the curve should look like, and uh, it came in handy as a check on the code, and it really did look pretty much like this graph, especially when I eliminated the false zero, put in a real zero. An outline of the steps the program will execute I certainly have that, and I used it too. So that came in really handy. Um, reasonable attempt at writing the program .m files. Hopefully, I've saved that. Yeah, grayed out, so I must have saved it recently. Um, program that works properly. I think it does that. And uh, it's not printing out, out any uh, extra garbage, so I'm okay there. Nothing being printed to the command window. Um, Got to have your name in every. I remember putting that in there. Code must be documented. In a comment. Say what the function does. So I, I asked you to do that there. Now there's anything anywhere list of arguments of the function, the input variables, variables with uh, what it is, the distance observer is from the track, that's the first one, and VT, the speed of the train. Should return no values, stating right in the fact that it returns no values, output variables none, so that's cool. For the case of function that includes segments that are not self-explanatory, I decided that uh, this was pretty straightforward, what I'm doing here, so I didn't need any explanatory comments on what the, what I'm doing in the code there. You must provide attribution. Alright, so make sure you don't just copy down what I wrote. Uh, if it produces one or more graphs, each graph must be titled. Um, I think you know I did that. All right, I got a title of the graph. Each axis must be title, time, frequency, 10 seconds. With what is being plotted along that axis and in square brackets, the units. So square brackets, not parentheses. There must be an appropriate set of tick marks labeled with values on each axis. And then, uh, it looks like that's it. So, last couple of times I forgot to save it and run it after the final edit, but uh, this looks like it has been saved and run. So I'm going to call that a wrap on Project 6, video number 3.